is that education is cognitive education is about reading and writing and uh, one of the other things is that if you can't measure it you can't develop it that's kind of the theory uh, one is uh, your thoughts on uh, that education being cognitive then the second element of is fitness testing um, a means and methods to motivate people or is it counterproductive or is there in any other way of measuring uh, experience do you it's want to like, talk about uh, what should i start with nigel uh, if I, I'll, i'll just pick up the first bit um, measuring and then we'll, we'll, uh, experience. we'll come back onto the fitness i think um yes as 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 we know for years um the academic the cognitive the mind has often been su- seen as superior to the body and that's what we call a dualist approach um now physical literacy is based on a monist approach that sees the body and mind as one <clears throat> and i know the indian culture very much sees an individual as a holistic person now one of our problems is that our society constantly asks for exam results and grades so that people can progress through life interestingly i'm not sure what's happened in india with the coronavirus but so many children this year have not been able to sit their exams and they are being given grades based on the work that they've been do- that had been done before so they will still make they will still progress they will still go to the next stage of their education um and therefore that actually suggest we don't necessarily need to have the tests and just because you are testing it doesn't mean that it is valuable so physical activity is valuable to all of us i know when i go out and i go for a run or a, a bike ride i enjoy that physical activity i get a sense of well-being uh mentally i i feel fresher and more able to carry on with life and i i think that's the case case for most people so i i would suggest that we need to value physical activity for what it gives us as individuals margaret yes. i think you want to pick yes, up yes well i mean i'll come back to you again for fitness in a minute um this whole business of what is valued in school i think is somewhat short sighted because i'm concerned with would like to see more experience in the arts which again is very hard to to measure experience in the arts um because it brings a breadth and quality to life throughout life and i think that, that people should recognize the, the value of physical activity throughout life and i don't think it should be downgraded just because you can't test it you can't test it because the the testing the testing copy would be is are these eight people still physically active 30 years down the line that's what we want that's what we want we want there to be a, a change but it doesn't it isn't happening now and it won't happen in a term it'll happen over you know over 10 or 20 years or whatever that that's what we're asking so we're asking people to, to look ahead and as i said to you yesterday look at the people the adults in the country what do they need what would they be what would they be benefit from experiences in the school and it could be more singing or art more, more art it could be more physical activity it could be other things as well but if the the people out there the, the population the adult population can tell you what they need and they need more physical activity if if i can pick up the test in now up in and, and the from a fitness point of view um i know that uh, uh, india are looking at potentially uh, testing children using fitness tests and i think the simple reason is for this is there are fitness tests out there and they can provide a measurement however a fitness test on its own is of no use to anyone every child is different 
Every child has different capabilities. Every child matures at a different rate, is motivated differently. So if you are just going to measure a child at a particular time, all that's doing is providing information. It's not providing anything else. So the other thing is on, on the fitness, often tests that are used are tests that are used by high level performers and have been modified for children and they're not appropriate for children. However, it is important for children to understand that if they want to improve the fitness, they can test certain aspects of their fitness and work and develop on their fitness over a period of time, if that's a focus that they want. Uh, and therefore, understanding that from an education point is important. Okay. Now, Margaret, I don't know whether you want to pick up a little bit more on on uh, the matrix and assessing generally. Well, or stay with fitness, uh, for a minute. Um, two, two things to say about fitness. Um, if you're going to measure somebody's fitness, whether it's cardiovascular or whether it's endurance or whatever it is, just to have got a number of uh, that, that is the outcome of this fitness testing, that just gives you information, like, like Nigel said. If you're going to do fitness testing, and that is going to make a difference to the type of activity that you suggest people are involved in or the way they're involved, et cetera, et cetera. If it feeds forward in a way that will promote participation because they are doing something which is appropriate to them, help their, their cardiovascular or help their whatever it is, then that is to a certain extent valuable. Um, however, um, and we've got two or three people in this country who write extremely well on this and they are very much concerned with fitness and fitness testing. And they say that fitness sessions and fitness testing, there is no concrete evidence that that makes any difference to their attitude to physical activity. Wonderful. That, that, that's great. Um, to hear. These, are, these are people got, who are promoting fitness and they are talking about the best way to use fitness as a motivator, as one element of physical competency in physical literacy. Wonderful. That's that's great to hear. Uh, Nigel, you want to add something? Yeah, I was just going to say, do you want to come back at a sort of chart in the, 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 the physical literacy journey? Because I think that's important. Um, and I think the key message there is that what's important is what's important to us as an individual. If I feel I have made progress, then I don't need an A star or a, a 69 points or whatever. The importance is for me to reflect on what I think I have done. So having opportunities to reflect on your progress and then consider your next steps. I, I, I give you an example. Uh, a lot of people are motivated to do a 5K run, usually for charity. And these are people who haven't perhaps run very much. So they'll be encouraged to walk to start with and do a little bit of running. They'll reflect on that. And at some stage, they might think, you know what, I can run a little bit further or a little bit faster. And then they come to, they train for an event. They do the 5K and they, they do it in 40 minutes. And they think, wow. The reflection is theirs. The experience is theirs. And it doesn't matter whether they're 155th out of 200. That is not important. What's important is how they feel. And therefore, that might then encourage them to do another 5K and possibly to go faster or just to enjoy it or do a 10K or do a triathlon. Um, and, and I think the key is... The individual's reflection is important, how they feel about themselves, what they feel they've achieved, the progress they've made. In yes, I, mean, I, I think that, oh, I, I, won't, I won't speak for long. I think that where there is progress and individuals making progress, I think that their friends and family need to celebrate it. You know, yeah. I mean, perhaps they've run one, one K. That's fantastic, fantastic. Um, you know, you, you can do this now. That's lovely. 
never mind about the marathon runners this is really good for you that's that's awesome i think it it actually uh, if i were to just uh, recap a bit i think uh, the success of our pe program us in school sports and art program would be to see when 30 years down the line how many of these people are actually playing sport or actually active and how much of motivation knowledge and experience competence they have to continue that journey not only for the next 30 years but the entire part of your life and that's what i would really see that people are celebrating these small victories so that each one motivates you to push further for a few years and you continue to do this journey for life and i and i picked that word human flourishing from the book of yours margaret where you talk about physical activity and human flourishing as one whole unit and which is such an important thing so it leads me to this question in the times of covid when people are locked up at home environments are not greatly uh, friendly to to facilities and infrastructure people have to start off how do we motivate them in the sense and and this word about celebrating that 1 km the first beginning is important but also i think from a, just to put things in perspective we as a nation are different nations amongst nations whether it's economically culturally and uh, we have luckily have a lot of uh, dance forms as well do you see uh, this wide variety and this thing helping india in some sense or what do you think uh, the person who is at home needs to take away from this conversation Are we going to talk about COVID, or are you talking more generally? I think uh, most specifically about COVID for the moment. But it will, of course, uh, how, even when things open up, how are you going to be motivated to continue this journey? If you have not done it for the last few years, uh, you've been at home. Um, you, you as a uh, housewife, you've not spent too much uh, time to go out. Then, how do you start this journey, and what would be the biggest motivation? Well, I have to tell you that it has been an amazing experience because there have been classes on the television online um for people of all ages and all endowments, all abilities, and people have I understand lapped those up and they have taken part and families at home have been encouraged to join in at home in a way they haven't done before because you know, here we are, we've got a month, but what are we going to do? What are we going to do? and they they say well we're going to learn how to cook or we're going to learn how something um we're allowed we've been allowed out once a day and now more than once a day for physical activity in this country and i have been walking every day that's what my my exercise at the moment all i can manage what i'm allowed to do and the number of families as well as individuals but mainly families who have been running cycling or walking and it's a joy to see them because they are talking to each other they are smiling they are happy and i just say many times i do hope these people who have had such fulfillment and pleasure from some form of activity will continue they will have found something attractive and they will want to continue afterwards but i think it has been a revelation and the other thing to say is when the school shut down with a music to my ears the first headline in the paper was these children are not going to be moving you know we're going to have huge problems of children who are getting more obese or mental stress and everything and it was the first subject which was picked up as being um in danger through no schooling Do you agree Nigel yeah absolutely and i i think the priority of certainly the UK government and know other governments in different countries was food medicine and exercise uh now you know for a government to recognize that exercise is the third probably most important so we're meeting the basic basic needs of the food and any medicines and then it's exercise for that holistic health and well-being i i think that that's a, a clear message as margaret said uh i i do a lot of running and cycling i have never seen so many people out in on on the roads in the in the fields walking running cycling it it's been fantastic but i also know that a lot of people uh, have been um stuck 
in their uh, houses, in their flats, in their rooms, and they have had to be very creative. Now, there has been support for that. There have been a lot of online uh, people who have done fitness sessions, short sessions. Uh, they've, they've made them interesting. They've made them varied, and they've engaged the audience. I know the schools I've worked with have given the children challenges to do. They've asked them to do little mini Olympics with their families, for example, to create dances and share the dances with other people. Um, and, and lots of other little challenges, skipping challenges and so on, that keep them going and keep them motivated. And I, I think as this uh, problem sorts itself out, as we get through the lockdown, as people get back to a more normal life, it's not going to be normal again, it's more normal life. I think because they valued that physical activity during that difficult time, they will continue to value that and look for opportunities to engage in physical activity. It's been a positive experience and, 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 and something which they have um, developed a realisation of, of what their potential is. Uh, Gopi, have you got any particular questions? Because I see that time is now 20 minutes when we did think we would possibly open it to everybody else. Are there any burning questions that you wanted to, to discuss before we move over? I, I think we will go to the chat and uh, pick the questions up from the chat. I think uh, from my side, uh, I think I've asked many of the questions and we can go to the chat and if there's anything I can add up. Okay. Just, just, just while you're doing that, um, one of the things that we, we talked about the other day um, was the issue with children and sort of gaming machines and the, the technology age. Um, which sort of links into the current situation. So I'm, I'm just sort of tying those two in. And the, the technologists have been brilliant in their creativity. They've made games at the right level for the children. They've made progressive stages so the children can move forwards and, and enjoy it. They've given them little rewards as they've made those progress. They've, they've, made the activities very interesting so they can be creative at different times and it gives them that that immediate gratification and i think what we've got to realize if we're going to promote physical activity and this is parents this is teachers this is coaches policy makers we've got to make experiences for anyone taking part as interesting, as exciting, as challenging, as rewarding as these sort of games. So, yeah, I mean, I've written this piece of paper about how clever computers uh, games are, etc. And at the bottom, I've said physical activity, physical education needs to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have, have we got? Have we got some questions then? Who's who's managing that, Amit? Who is managing the questions? The time they get the questions. I think one one uh, one thing which actually bothers me is the fact that they're like probably on a daily basis there are hundreds of games being started up. And we used to have computers. How long has it been before the human race, as such, the entire world has developed a new physical game? And since it's not possibly uh, commercially rewarding probably just people are not putting the effort to actually develop a game which is new and that's something which i would really love to see is it's a new circumstance things are different environments are different challenges are different so i'd really love to see some people put together and develop a physical game which actually takes um, movement and also fun and uh, various other things which can actually help people motivate themselves to start playing those things. And and I think that's something which I really love. Yeah. Gilpia, as, as you know, um, games have spread throughout the ages within countries and then from country to country, continent to continent. And um, I, I think in this technological age, 
there are still many games because I, when I travel to India, I see the likes of Kabaddi, I see the likes of Coco. Now, Kabaddi is actually an activity that I'm seeing more of in the UK on television. And, you know, there are, are opportunities for games from other countries and activities to, from other countries to be shared and, and taken on board. Um, but, but, yeah, you, you're right. I think the commercialization of sport has influenced that. Uh, and, and, and sports are such big business now um, that they, they want to control what they're doing and make sure it makes money um, as a priority. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I agree with whatever you're saying. It's just so easy. I mean, I have four grandsons and I know all about this. It's so easy. All you have to do is to sit down and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go anywhere. You sit down, you open your, your, your tablet and you play. No effort. Doesn't matter what the weather's like. You're on your own or whatever it is. It's too easy. It's too addictive. It's too quick gratification. Um, and yes, you're right. It would be fantastic to have more um, activity. However, here I go again. Are there the spaces? Are there the welcoming spaces? The spaces of here's here's this space of, of, of ladders and whatever it is asking to be moved. Um, are there people who can uh, make sure it's safe to, to encourage? Unfortunately, to go out and do something is quite complicated. You have to have the transport, the money, the equipment, the weather. You just open your tablet and you can play for three hours, you know. It, uh, it's yeah, a hard, if I just, it's a hard thing for us to do. If I just come in there, Margaret, the, the environment is really key. And I know that the temperature in, in, in India, you know, currently would be in the 40s. And that, that's a real challenge. But the last time I was in India, I was speaking to a businessman who was keen to develop a, another town stroke city that was really focused on, on physical activity. So the cars were, were all underground out the way. Uh, people could play games in different areas. There were facilities. And if you imagine just walking into an area where there were a whole range of facilities and you could choose the different activities with your friends to play, I think, I mean, that's a, that's a, a tremendous challenge, but as, as an ideal opportunity, it, it's maximising the facilities we have. And I know some of those are very, very basic in many areas maximizing those facilities and encouraging people to be out and, and, and using them as much as possible. So in the last uh, so 10 years or so, I think there's been a significant improvement, whether it's running as a tradition, whether it's yoga, now whether it's uh, movement in general, people going to structured gym classes or staying home and following us, uh, following sessions on television. I think there's been significant increase and also generally from the top, if you look at whether it's the prime minister talking about fitness and health or physical activity and yoga, there has been definitely an increase. And, and what you said is right, Nigel, we have people talking about it and there's a huge population out there. So I think from our side, there are a lot of positives and uh, truly um, this conversation uh, is, is, is so rich. And in the last few days, um, people have really used the experience, um, the COVID uh, scenario to actually help them better their experience and learning. And it's something which uh, I believe uh, sounds good for the future. I think there are lots to be optimistic about. And as a culture, uh, we look at it as monism is what we look at in the sense mind and body is one and uh, flourishing uh, is something which is so keen. And um, Margaret, uh, you want to say something on this? Well, I just wanted you to share with people your idea about having a team of ambassadors to um, promote this um, vision, to promote the value. And you pointed out that, you know, you've got your PE teachers and they tend to be tied to what they have to do in school. And some of them are promoting physical literacy and some of them maybe not. I, I don't know. But you were talking to me that we need more than the PE teacher to really sell the, the value and to sell uh, the, the, the contribution to quality of life. And we came up with the idea that the, the best way to start would be to have parents who were really passionate about it and they could 
be role models and then they could pass it on to their own children and those children to other children. I mean, do you think that's a possibility to have another army of people to promote beyond the, the PE teacher? I think it's so very important because there are uh, thousands of schools, lakhs of schools in the country uh, which have uh, very few uh, teachers to start off with. So if you're looking at only the PE teacher to learn about, to teach physical activity for life to the students, then we would be actually missing out on a huge opportunity. So I believe it's important that we have people who are interest, interested in physical activity, who have the mindset to look at kids and see whether they're actually getting a pleasant experience out of movement they're getting. So it's not about correcting them. It's not about having the correct technique, which is the job of coaches. And that's the another segment. But here it's a chance, even if it's free play, to make them just go out there and play and just to have an enabler kind of thing. So it's, the word would be not even physical literacy uh, promoter. It's like an enabler. It's like people within, in the sense I could be the youngster and uh, who could just uh, use this opportunity to encourage elders in the apartment to come out and move. Uh, people like the parents to say that we will go out for a walk, but I want the kids to come out and run and practice and then just take your hands off the tablet and the phone and you just you start moving and let's all get together as a family community and come together. So my belief is that PL as a concept is, is really something which is very, very important. And we cannot also just say that it's the job of the physical education teacher. I think parents and society play a huge role. The society in general plays a whole role. And then it's a journey for life. So we need people as enablers across all sections of the society at all ages to celebrate what is very, very important is, is the word which you said. It's celebrate and look at that which you've improved, what you've benefited, and then feel good about it. And it is an individual's own journey by him or herself. And that thing is very, very important. Gopi, if I, if I just come in there, because my experience in India is that the intergenerational link is extremely strong in India. You know, uh, the older parents and grandparents look after the younger ones. The, the parents look after the older grandparents and so on. And everybody does look after everybody else. So there's a real community spirit and a real family spirit in India. And I, I think, it, as you've just said there, being able to capture that and being able to provide activities for everyone at all different stages of life and to get people to promote that, whether it's parents, whether it's young children as ambassadors, whether it's teachers or coaches or community workers, whether it's older people. I, th I think there are lots of people who are out there who would want to do that. And to me, India has a very good structure for that to, to happen. Now, I just want to say what I've said a number of times before. I think it has to come from the top down and I think it has to come from the bottom up. And if you were to choose a large village or a small town or, or somewhere, you and try and try out this ambassador idea. And if you have an example of good practice, then the governments will jump on it. And especially if it's saving the medical profession, you know, a lot of money or you know the national health service never mind but uh, that, that's, that's as, as well but if you if you have something that works a sort of communal feeling that we're all in this together we're all so much happier we're fulfilled we're fitter we're, we're less obese etc and in this small town or, or, or large village this we've got this um this community of of commitment and interest and support they will need a bit of support because Sometimes people think, well, if you've got somebody in charge, their job is to tell you what you're doing wrong. That's not what you do. What you do, you tell someone if they've done it right, and now if they want to improve, you do the next thing. So we have, they have to have a different sort of persona. Let's have some, an example of good practice, and then the government will say, well, it does seem to work. You know, we, we're saying it's a good thing, but now look, I can see that it's actually working. And the people will tell you it's working. 
don't just need to have any tests or measurements. Just picking up on that, Margaret, I know the, the work Elms has been doing is, is, is excellent in India. And I've seen an, a number of pictures where uh, certain areas have been turned into playgrounds using tyres and all sorts of other things. And the community has got together to build an area for children to play in. I've all, I also do work in other countries and, and, and in, in Taiwan, in some of the parks there, they have uh, areas that are designed for older people. So I'll have railings along an uneven air, uh, area so the older person can continue to walk with support, but also have a little bit of challenge as well. Uh, and, and then they have little little mini gyms that, that the older people can access just as much as the younger. So I think facilities and getting that creativity and innovation within the communities, as you said, Margaret, the wider and, and more rural communities and, and sharing those examples is, is really important. That's really, really wonderful. Um, have you got any questions on uh, Nigel? I'm not able to see it on my screen. Okay, I, I haven't got any questions. I, I haven't got the questions on mine, unfortunately. Okay, I, I have a couple of them. Um, how can the PET understand the motivations of different participants is one which I got. I think we answered this. To yeah, a, I think it's core to tasks. Yeah. The other one which I have is how was PL implementation possible in a 30-minute class? What else can be done to promote PL in schools? Okay, I, I will pick that up, Margaret, because I've, I've been out and I've, I've been to government schools uh, and other schools and I have seen very, very short classes, 30 minutes, where very limited activity is undertaken, where the key focus is on discipline, lining up, numbering off, ordering off, uh, a long warm-up, uh, any drills that are undertaken are done in lines where there's one ball between you know, 10 people and then very little time for any sort of further activity after that. And I think this is where training comes in and this is where uh, principals at schools need to provide adequate time. I know because the schools I work with have up to an hour a day every day for children to, be, to do physical education. I know that's not possible in every school, but I think an hour should be around the sort of time, 45 minutes to an hour. The first part of the lesson shouldn't be a warm up. It should be an engagement activity that gets the children moving and links to what the focus of the lesson is. All the children moving, All no the children. queuing, no queuing. There should be planned, structured activities that engage all the children that are differentiated, that lead on to next activities where they're learning from a creative, cognitive point of view, as well as developing their motivation and confidence and their physical capabilities. To do that in 30 minutes is a real challenge. So I think schools have to reflect on that provide the right amount of time, right facilities and equipment. And also from a class size point of view, I know some classes go up to 50 or 100. Ideally classes need to be 30 or below. 20 to 30 would be the ideal. And then the teacher will be able to understand the children better. If the classes are bigger than that, then what you do tend to do is effectively military drill. And that serves limited purpose from a, from a development point of view. Well, from motivation point of view as well. I mean, it doesn't motivate people. Yeah. We have one more question. Uh, I think it's for three of us. I think I'll ask Margaret Nigel to go first. What has been your favorite indoor activity? Nigel? What has been our favorite indoor activity? Oh, well, I mean, I can tell you, I can tell you. I do, I book, I do what I call barefoot creative dance. That's my favorite indoor activity. Okay, um, for me, I, I, would, I would say I, I played a lot of basketball and volleyball, 
enjoyed them both immensely. And I'm just watching the Michael Jordan Last Dance series uh, and, and, and amazed at his, his skills. And, and I was actually uh, telling someone the other day, I, I think basketball is one of the best games because it, you have to, it's so physically active. You can be creative with your tactics. It's intense uh, and, and competitive. But I, I love all activities. So, yeah, basketball I go for, I suppose. Gopi? Uh, for me, uh, badminton as a sport is indoors. So I think that's an easy question. But um, I think for me, yoga is something which I really love. Uh, although if you look at me doing my asanas, I wouldn't be the most flexible of them. But having said that, it still gives me the most amount of pleasure because um, you can close your eyes and be with yourself. And uh, even the exercise, the mind-body connect uh, so wonderfully happens. And uh, the particular uh, exercise for me is Surya Namaskar. And I, I just feel it's, it's very, very um, uh, enthusiastic. I feel very enthusiastic and alive when I do that exercise. For me, that's been really, really something which I really love. And it's an activity that's highly valued in, in India, isn't it? Because, as you say, it sort of links in with the culture and the holistic nature. Which is, uh, which is good. Yeah, there's a lot of people who do it for various uh, various reasons, uh, f for spiritual, for religious reasons. But I think for me, even from a... And this is not now. Uh, when I had an ACL injury and I had, I had my surgeries and I couldn't really run as much and had impact... Um, the only source of me to get endurance kind of exercises was I needed to fall uh, fall back to find something. And that's where a whole body exercise, which doesn't have impact, which also helps you build strength and endurance was Surya Namaskar. So I continued to do this. So this has almost been like a 20 years cycle. Before we say goodbye, can I just say something? That there was a feeling in the previous discussions we've had that physical literacy was not for what you might call the people with special needs or who are disabled. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that it is absolutely not true. Everybody, everybody uh, from where they're at. So please don't forget, don't say, oh, it's not for the people with special needs, either mental, physical or social. It is for absolutely everybody. And everybody, everybody can make progress. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we've just run out of time. Uh, it's been really wonderful. From my point, I think the takeaways for me would be what Margaret says, celebrate the small victories. I think we've been talking about uh, fitness. We've been talking about numbers. We've been talking about people, what they need to do correctly. But I think what matters is the experience how you actually see yourself coming out of that class, out of that experience, and how as a young child, you are actually able to move yourself in various environments and collect those to ensure that you continue to do this activity for life. For me, uh, what she said, as a badminton player, I love my sport, but the reality is that the journey will end at some point. Like I love playing singles in badminton, which cannot be uh, through my life. So the course has to change and you have to find another activity or tone down the kind of activity. But I think the journey is about knowledge and motivation to ensure that you continue this for life. I think I'm sure for many of them who have got onto this webinar, it's been really encouraging. PEs have a great role to play. Physical education is very, very important. The people in society, the parents have a huge role to play. The enablers, the people who help out, the people in the apartment who say, let the kids play. These are the people who are going to be, need to be celebrated. The people who are in and walk around, save the park, save the places to play. I think these are people who are very important. We have dance as an art form, which is huge in our country, whether it's Bollywood dance, whether it's Bangla, whether it's Bharatanatyam or Kathakali or Kuchipudi or Manipuri, you, we have great art forms which help us move. I think what is important is where is your motivation to move? Find that, get away from the tablets, move, start moving, 
and start celebrating. And everybody should become an enabler for the other person, for the society to become physically literate. I think that's very, very important. I think for me, uh, Margaret, uh, this book uh, holds key to a lot of those things. And when you talk about embodied being, when you talk about human flourishing, I think physical activity has been a source of it for many, many years in our culture. I think for, for decades, for centuries, we've talked about it in our culture, whether it's Vivekananda who spoke about it, the Aurobindo and the mother who spoke about it. I think people have valued the mind-body connect and the activities which we do. I think it's such a great pleasure and an honor to have you here. And um, I think uh, for me, the last two sessions have been really so enriching and I'm sure for each of them who have joined on to the webinars, it's been an equally great experience. Thank you very much, uh, Margaret. And I hope that uh, you, you give your valuable advice to India and we seek your support to take this journey forward. Thank you, Nigel, and thank you, Margaret. And uh, I uh, wish you all, uh, listeners, and Margaret and Nigel, a uh, very safe and a healthy uh, life forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.